Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at negative exponents. You know, when, when we start off a lesson about exponents and I say we're going to talk about positive exponents the last lesson, you had to expect that negative exponents were coming. I mean, that's just, otherwise I would have just called them exponents. But because I referred to them as positive, you had to kind of know this was coming. But don't worry, we're going to take it slow. We're going to get through this. It's really not that bad. All right, so take a deep breath and let's get started. What do we do when we get a negative exponent? I've gotten two examples here to illustrate what we do when we have a negative exponent. I have 1 over 5 to the power of negative 2 and simply 5 to the power of negative 2. Whenever you get a negative exponent, all you need to do is flip it over. So if it's on the bottom of the fraction, you put it in the top of the fraction, the exponent becomes positive. If it's a number by itself, you'll put it in the denominator and have a numerator of 1, as you see in this example. And when you move them from top to bottom or bottom to top, you change the exponent to being positive. So that's it. 1 over 5 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 25. 1 over, or 5 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 over 25, all right? So essentially what we're going to be doing is flipping over fractions, talking about reciprocals a little bit today. Um, if it's a whole number, it goes into the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it comes to the numerator. If you have some in both the numerator and denominator, they'll switch where they are. It's not a big deal. Whenever you have a negative exponent, you switch the position in the fraction, and then you change it to being positive. So let's look at a couple of questions that we've got with um, solving. With this one here, we have 2 over 3 to the power of negative 5. When we flip this over, and this one here, I like the example that I, I put up here because what happens when you have it on the denominator and you bring it up to the numerator and you've already got a number there? Well, you multiply. So with 3 to the power of negative 5, we'll bring it to the numerator and we'll multiply the current numerator of 2 times 3 to the power of positive 5. We solve the exponents first. Oh, by the way, and I showed this in the last one and didn't really mention it, you can rewrite this as just being 2 times 3 to the power of 5. If you ever have the denominator of 1, you can just get rid of it, because anything divided by 1 will just give you that number. So we'll start out by solving our exponent. 3 to the power of 5 is 243, and then we will do the multiplying 2 times 243 will give you 486, all right? And that is it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and solve this negative exponent. 6 to the power of negative 4. Remember, if we ever have just a regular number to the power of negative 4, we switch it down to the denominator. So it will be 1 over 6 to the power of positive 4. And then we'll just solve. 6 to the power of positive 4 means 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. 6 times itself 4 times, which will give us 1,296. Very nice. So our final answer is 1 over 1,296. All right. Now, if we've got some variables, and I'm going to show you the method I use to solve for variables. Um, this might not be completely mathematically correct, but for me it's the way that makes the most sense. Um, it is mathematically correct, but it might not be the way that um, most, some people would tell you to do it. But this is the way I'm going to tell you to do it, and for me it makes sense. So take a look at this. If I'm given 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 27, what I want to do is I want to get both sides of my equal sign looking as close to being the same as possible. So my first thing is that I'm going to put 3 as a fraction. 3 to the power of x. Instead, I'm going to make it 1 over 3 to the power of negative x. All right? See, now my left side of the equation looks more like the right side. OK? So basically, I'm going to try and make these two things match as much as I can. So if I have 3 to the power of positive x, I'll make it into a fraction so it looks like the right side of this equation. And I'll give it the power of there, um, negative x. Now, I want to change this fraction, 1 over 27, to having the same base as 3. I know that 3 to the power of 3 is 27, all right? 
3 to the power of 3 is 27. So now what I've done is I've made both of these fractions look very similar. 1 over 3 to the power of negative x, 1 over 3 to the power of 3. Because they look exactly the same, I can eliminate a lot of different things. And I didn't write this step in here. I probably should have. What I can do is I could get rid of everything except for those parts that I want. Negative x is equal to 3. All right? You can see that right there. The only things here, 3 to the power of something is 3 to the power of 3. So I could write this out as negative x is equal to positive 3. And we can rewrite that as by multiplying both sides times negative 1, that x is equal to negative 3. All right? So again, some things that we can do. This is the way I solve it. I try and make my right side look as much like my left side as possible, and then I get rid of everything else that's the same so that I can get my variable by itself. Here's another example of what I would do. x to the power of negative 6 is equal to 1 over 64. I'm going to write my left side as a fraction, just like I did before. 1 over 6, x to the power of 6 is equal to 1 over 64. And then I'm going to change the right side of my equation so that I have something that looks pretty similar. I know 2 to the power of 6 is 64. That takes a little bit of practice in getting used to. Um, something to the power of 6, I could start plugging things in there like 1 to the power of 6. Well, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is always going to give you 1, so probably start with 2. And then if 2 didn't work, maybe try 3 and 4 and 5. But by the time you get, I mean, you're going to get some really big numbers if you start using anything above 2. So I know that 2 to the power of 6 is equal to 64, so I'll plug that in. Now everything in these two fractions is exactly the same, so I know that x is equal to 2. All right? So again, that's, that's kind of the way that I would solve these. It's the way that works and makes sense to me. If you have another way that you'd like to, to solve them, that's fine. You can go ahead and solve them in a way that makes sense for you. But this way here seems to make sense. It's pretty quick. Um, it's pretty efficient, and I like the way that it works out. So anyway, that was our lesson on negative exponents. It can be a little bit of a pain sometimes, but there, hopefully that lesson helped you out.